Hello everybody and welcome to Top Tabletop. I'm Gab Zuniga and today I will show you how to play Jamaica. Jamaica is a competitive game for 2 to 6 players where we are pirates competing in a race around the island trying to amass the biggest amount of gold. The components of the game are one game board, six player boards, six ships, 66 action cards in 6 colors, 80 gold doubloons, 45 food tokens, 45 gunpowder tokens, 9 treasure tokens, 12 treasure cards, 1 compass, 2 action dice, and 1 combat die. For this game, we will use the help of Bender, Magus, and Wesker. Place the game board in the middle of the table. Each player gets a chip, which is placed on the Port Royal space on the board, and also a player board, representing the 5 holes on their ship. Each player also receives a set of action cards matching the color of their ship, which are shuffled and placed face down above their boards. This will form their personal decks, and the empty space at its side will be the discard pile. Randomly select 9 of the 12 treasure cards and put them face down here. Put the remaining 3 cards back in the box without looking at them. Place the 9 treasure tokens on the 9 pirate layers on the board, the ones with rocks in the shape of a skull. Place the combat die here. Place all the gold, food and gunpowder tokens nearby to form the resource bank. Each player places 3 food tokens and 3 doubloons in 2 of their holes. Everyone takes the top 3 action cards from their decks to form their hands. One player is randomly chosen to be the captain for the first round. They take the compass and the two action dice and the game is ready to begin. The game is played over a series of rounds. First, the captain rolls the action dice and, after consulting his hand, he decides in which order to put them here. The first die will be the morning action and the second one will be the evening action. Once the dice have been placed, each player chooses a card to play and puts it face down on the discard pile. When everybody has chosen a card, you will take turns playing. The captain is the first one to play. On your turn, you reveal your card and carry out the two actions. First the left one, which corresponds to the morning action, and then the right one, corresponding to the evening action. Then your turn ends and the player to the left will take their turn. Once everybody has completed their actions, each player takes the top card from their deck to have 3 again. If the deck is empty, the discard pile is shuffled to form a new deck. Then, the compass passes to the player to the left and they will be the new captain for the next round. The cards have two types of actions, loading and movement. If the card shows a doubloon, gunpowder or food, then you must load that type of resource. The action die shows how many tokens of that resource must be loaded into an empty hold you can never add tokens to a hold that already contains something. If you no longer have empty holds available during loading, then you must empty one to make room and put the discarded tokens back in the bank. Important, you are not allowed to return the same type of resource as the one you are loading. It has to be different. And if all your holds have the same resource as the one you are loading, then the loading action is ignored. If the card shows a movement symbol, then you must move your ship forwards for green or backwards for red, and the die indicates the number of spaces you must move. When moving, you must always pay the price of the space in which your movement ends. If it's a pirate lair, you don't have to pay anything, it's a free space, and if there's still a treasure token on it, it is removed from the game and you take the top treasure card. However, if it is a port, you pay the number of doubloons shown on the golden needle, or if it's at sea, you pay food tokens equal to the white squares depicted. You can choose to pay from one or multiple holds, but if you don't have enough resources to pay, then there is a shortage. When a shortage occurs, first you have to pay as much as you can afford. For example, if you have to pay 3 food, but you only have 2, you have to pay those 2. And then move your ship backwards to the first space where you are able to pay the full cost. You end your movement there and pay the cost. You can stop at a pirate lair as a result of a shortage and you don't have to pay anything and you can even take the treasure if it's still available. If, at the end of any movement, you land in a space already occupied by another ship, then before paying the cost of the space, a combat must take place. 
the player who lands an unoccupied space is the attacker. If there is only one ship, he must attack it, but if there is more than one, the attacker has to decide one to attack and then the combat begins. The attacker starts by spending any number of gunpowder tokens, if they have any, and then roll the combat die and add the result to the number of gunpowder tokens spent. This is their total combat strength. Then it is the defender's turn. They do the same by choosing to spend any number of gunpowder tokens first and then rolling the combat die. The player with the higher combat strength wins the battle. Also, if a player rolls the star, they immediately win. If the attacker rolls it, the defender has no chance to play, and if the defender rolls it, they win no matter the strength of the attacker. If after a combat there is a tie, nothing happens, but if there is a winner, he chooses one of three options. They can steal one of their opponent's holds, following the usual loading rules. They can steal any treasure card from their opponent, or they can give a treasure card to their opponent. Now, why would you want to give away a treasure? Well, let's talk about the treasures. Among the treasure cards, there are 8 treasures and 4 powers. 5 of the 8 treasures give points at the end of the game, but the other 3 are cursed treasures and they deduct points. These are the ones you might want to get rid of if you win a combat. If you get a treasure, it's kept face down until the end of the game, but if you get a power, you keep it face up and you can use this power for as long as you have it. Morgan's map lets you have a hand of 4 cards instead of 3. Saren's Saver allows you to re-roll your combat die or make your opponents re-roll theirs. Lady Beth adds 2 points to your combat die, and the 6th hold adds has an extra hold with the usual loading rules. As soon as a player reaches Port Royal, they stop there. Any remaining evening action is ignored. The current game round is finished normally and the game ends. Now the players add up their points. To calculate your score, you take the number on the space where your ship currently is. It can even be negative if you're on the space marked minus 5 or any space before that. Then you add all the doubloons on your holds and all your treasures, good ones and bad ones, and the player with the highest points is the winner. If there's a tie, the player who is furthest along the race wins, and if there's still a tie, the players share the victory. To show you an example of a gameplay, let's say that the game has been going for a few rounds and now Wesker is the captain. He rolls the action dice and gets a 6 and a 2. After looking at his cards, he decides to assign the 2 to the morning action and the 6 to the evening action. He chooses his card and waits for the others to choose theirs. After they've chosen, Wesker reveals his card. His morning action is forward movement, so he advances 2 spaces and ends up at sea. He has to pay 3 food so he chooses to pay using resources from these two holds, and his evening action is food, so he takes 6 food tokens. Now it's Magus' turn. His morning action is gunpowder, so he takes 2 gunpowder tokens, and his evening action is doubloons, so he takes 6 doubloons, but all of his holds are already full, so he has to get rid of something. Since he's getting doubloons, he has to discard something else, so he decides to discard the gunpowder he just got. Finally, it's Bender's turn. His morning action is backwards movement, so he goes back two spaces. He lands with Magus, so there's a combat. Since Bender is the attacker, he goes first. He decides to spend four gunpowder tokens and then rolls the combat die. He gets an 8, so his total is 12. Then it's Magus' turn. He doesn't have any gunpowder, so he can't use it. He rolls the die and gets a 6, but since he has Saren's Saver, he decides to re-roll and gets a star, so he immediately wins and he decides to steal one of Bender's treasures. Now that the combat is over, Bender can resume his turn. He still has to pay for landing at the port, which costs 5 doubloons, but he only has 2, so there's a shortage. He pays the 2 doubloons and has to move backwards to a space he can afford. Here the path branches in two, so he can choose where he wants to go. He decides to go left. The first space is a pirate lair so he stops there since he doesn't have to pay anything, and there's still a treasure token there, so he removes it and takes the top treasure card, and this ends his morning action. Then his evening action is forward movement, so he advances 6 spaces. Here the path branches again, 
he decides to go left and lands in another pirate lair. He doesn't have to pay anything, but here the treasure token is already gone, so he can't take another treasure card. This ends this game round. Everyone takes one card, and Wesker gives the compass to Magus, who will be the captain for the next round. And that's how you play Jamaica. If you have any questions, leave it in the comments, and if you liked the video, don't forget to give it a like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and see you on the next video. Thank you.